You know, uh, there, there are various uh, in emerging you know, hot technologies that are out there today. And are there some that you feel hold the greatest potential to aid in the cause of transformation here at DISH? You know, I guess I, I'd start, Bill, by, by the caveat that, you know, I don't think technology has really transformed the business, you know, and, and I think that, that, as we've learned, what really transforms the business is looking hard and spending the, the time to get into the hard work and the detail of looking at your business processes, your business rules, thinking about your products, and ultimately technology has become a means to an end. That said, I think we spend a lot of time as CIOs, you know, in the last, let's say, year, talking about five or six things, right? I mean, cloud and social and mobile, bring your own device, big data, Security. I mean, I, you know, that, that's probably the, the list you'd hear just about every every CIO event right now. You know, of those, I think the one that that probably has the most promise for us in a couple of ways is I'd kind of more broadly call it mobility, right? So, mobility actually to us as a as a consumer products company uh, is a huge opportunity for mobile video, for instance. And so, using uh, for instance our Sling technology, our, our Hopper DVR technology. You can really extend that high quality video viewing experience out to, to the consumer on a variety of different platforms that are really fun and exciting. So I think that you know, as we begin to also enter a wireless business as a company over the next few years, um, it just tremendously exciting. I think that we've barely scratched the surface about what that's going to look like in the next few years. Mm -hmm. You know, more pragmatically as an IT group, we're really you know, embracing uh, the consumer uh, mobility innovation wave. Um, for, for some very specific use cases. For instance, our field installer force right now is moving from a kind of traditional ruggedized mil-spec tablet computer you know, to a consumer uh, sort of large format uh, smartphone. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's going to have a very pragmatic business case. It's going to save us a lot of money. It's going to be better user experience, you know, instant on. Uh, great consumer experience when you know they sign their their paperwork on the device, uh, or or whatever else we do with it. So, um, so mobility, I think, right now is probably top of mind for me. Mm -hmm. And and actually, uh, I've asked this question of other CIOs, and mobility never fails to be on their list, and no matter what the business uh, across a diversity of businesses. Are there any technologies or trends out there that you read about, hear about, uh, that you feel may be overhyped? I'm going to go out on a limb and say there are two. <laughs> so to me, like the broad term social, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, m my view of social is that, and, and, and by the way, I, you know, some of my peers aren't, I, I am. So I have Facebook and Twitter and I have a blog and, you know, all, all those things. But, um, but social to me is just an extension of electronic communication means we've had for, for many years, whether it was, you know, chat, email, uh, texting, you know, and, and I think that all of those for us are viewed as channels of, of consumer communication and customer service. So um, there are certainly now more channels, but again, I think it's it's just a progression of sort of the same things we've seen before. So, uh, you know, is it going to revolutionize the world? No. You know, will it change the way you provide customer service? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, the other one I'd say is probably overhyped is just the, the, the very nebulous phrase, I guess it should be nebulous, cloud, because yeah. clouds are nebulous. But, uh, um, you know, cloud to me is just a new name for a thing we've done for a long time. You know, it's, it was the uh, service bureau back in the day, you know, the outsourced provider, then it was the ASP, and, you know, then it was the co-location hosting provider, um, and, and today it's cloud. I'll be the technologies have changed, the model has not. And so I think that technology in particular is starting to catch up with some of the realities that, that as, you know, as, as outsourcers, when I was at Pro Systems, we learned many years ago. Um, so that one's a little bit out of the bang to hype ratio right now. It's interesting. Uh, so, so social media is, is more or less just the next iteration or evolution of collaboration and communication. Yes. Only there's more of it. In my view. In your, mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. And last question. A, a great point that you raised earlier that the technology is just the means to the end. Uh, a big part of the equation, obviously, is, is people. And, and you've talked about that previously. So if you look out now at, at some of the, the new solutions, technologies that are emerging, um, it, it, we always need new skills. We need a COBOL program, as you know, 20 years ago, and uh, you know, PC-related you know, developers uh, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, what about looking out a few years? What skills do you think are going to be needed that maybe we don't need so much today, and which may be perhaps in short supply? Yeah, I mean, I think that the, you know, talent availability is, has always been a problem. It's, there's certainly been some peaks and valleys through different economic cycles, but, but generally the problem has done nothing but increase. You know, there aren't enough really good people for all of us to, to hire. 
Um, and so, uh, you know, specifically today, for instance, I think that we see challenges in analytics or, you know, big data kinds of areas. Very hot skill, doesn't seem like there's a lot of people out there that have that, that knowledge set. Probably no different than what we would have said about ERP 10 years ago. So, so there's probably going to be this ongoing cycle of the hot skill or mobile developers, another good example. You know that that isn't available at the time. You know I think that 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 broader, if we look at how we source talent, you know it's it's a real battle. I think for all of us in in the CIO role. Um, you know, for instance, I think part of the uh, offshore strategy, the third party uh, vendor, you know, India, China, et cetera, you know, used to be strictly about labor arbitrage. You know, and then I think as we learned how to use that capability more, it became about uh, continuous productivity. So you get these 24 by 7 cycles. You know, now I think it's just as much about talent acquisition, you know, as it is about saving money. And, uh, and so I think all of us are going to have to get much uh, smarter about looking at those alternate sourcing models for talent. Uh, I think all of us, uh, I spend a lot of time with other CIOs where we're talking about our college recruiting programs, and I spend an awful lot of time with ours now. Um, we even talk about reaching deeper, you know, into the high schools, you know, in, in, in areas that, that we might be operating in. So um, I don't think there's, there's one solution to this, but it's something I think we have to prepare for the future. Uh, because it's going to be an increasing scarcity, uh, in my view, over the next three to five years. Mm. Well, good for the labor market, I suppose, uh, right. after the CIO is trying to scratch around and find the right talent. Absolutely. Well, Mike McClaskey, CIO of DISH, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you. And I'm Bill Labarris from IDG, and thank you for joining us today as well.